was that um, the claims of the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, were that in 1889 he claimed to be Imam Mahdi, and then a little while later in the Muslim Mahdi. In 1890, in 1890s, Yes. Early 90, yes. he claimed to be Messiah as well. That's right. yes. And then in 1901, he claimed to be a follower prophet. But uh, I was told that uh, by Mulvi um, Abdul Karim Sharma Sahib that actually he was prophet from 1889, <coughs> but he wasn't quite aware of his own status until. Well, this also to correct. Um, this, this of course, greatly surprised me. And I the wonder fact if is could... that. Uh, Hazrat Muhammad Sallam was being addressed as a prophet mm -hmm. right from the beginning, but he would interpret it differently. Being a humble man, as always the prophets are, he would not uh, conceive of himself as a prophet in the true terminal, uh, 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 the true definition of the prophet, <coughs> according to the Quranic term. So prophet can also be usually applied, the word prophet, to those to whom Allah speaks or who speak on behalf of Allah. Mm -hmm. So this is why he tried not to accept, face this situation. Like Azra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he first got, got the revelation, Ikhra bismi rabbik al he thought he was too humble to have received such a thing. So he said, what, is, what has happened to me? Despite the fact that it was a very certain revelation, he expressed doubt. That was not in fact a doubt about what had happened. It was again an expression of humility. How could such a thing have happened to me? That was what he wanted to say. So this is why Hazrat Muhammad avoided consciously interpreting it as such. If you see a good dream, in which your status is shown to you, the same would be your re reaction. But if later on Allah continues to tell you that you have a better status and higher status than you think you are, then ultimately there is no way out. So this is why Hazrat Masih Maudal Salatu Wasalam has written in Hakikatul Wahi that they, when he addressed me as Messiah, I wouldn't accept it as such. I thought it would, it was just a talk, uh, token, a word of endearment and nothing more. And he says, what uh, um, uh, <coughs> ratio, no, no, nisbat is, I mean, who am I, in other words, who am I as compared to Jesus Christ, or what comparison do I hold against him? That is, these are the words of Masih Madhavai Salatu Aslam. Said, I thought that, but then revelation came upon me like uh, rain and uh, it left me no way of escape but to accept this position. So this is the expression of humility which uh, we read in many of his books and out of the same humility he did not accept this, uh, the big offices which were um, bestowed upon him by Allah. Mm -hmm. So when ultimately he faced the situation, then he began to claim. And that was the time when he invited hostility, when he openly claimed that. Otherwise the revelations were already there in the books. Mm -hmm. okay. Sir. This is why I mentioned Brahine Amdiya. The arguments against, against the Hindus were there. But they did not create hostility at all because there was no claim to go with. The moment he made a claim, then the same arguments became the source of irritation to Hindus and uh, they started behaving like enemies to him. Thank you. Now, Abhulishan, yes, please, after you. So I think you have some time left after this boy. Yes. Sakhmuzu. So, uh, you know when the Muslims come to the uh, you know, go to Mecca to do pilgrimage, um, you know the entrance for Ahmadis, it is uh, not allowed. So. Do I know that? Sorry. Do I know that? 
Um, uh, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's different in different countries. It all depends on what sort of embassy there is to Saudi Arabia in a particular country. If there are Pakistani mullahs posted in that embassy or have some influence to exert there, then their attitude is quite different. In other places, they even offer, I mean, the very ambassadors are known to have offered the man the friends, why not go to Hajj? And they would uh, provide them all facilities and so on. So one of the Ahmadis from one country, I, I, I shouldn't name it, while he was going to Hajj, he met me and I said, how, how come? He said, uh, of course the ambassador is a friend of mine and he's very fine, he's a fine man, he knows I'm an Ahmadi. So he encouraged me. So I said, why not? He didn't have me fill any forms obnoxious to my faith. So I accepted it. So that is the story told to me by him. Even from other countries, from India, from many other countries I know, people always go and are still going. So this is not a generalized policy of the Saudi Arabians themselves. It is uh, a policy imposed upon them partly by some masters and partly by the Pakistani mullah. They, by, by their own, they are not like this, they are not narrow-minded people. Prince, uh, I mean the present ruler, Fahad, is a very open-minded man, is a man of good intentions and quite an educated person. But if a uh, person, if an Ahmadi goes there and he, the... If somebody reports about him to the Department of Religion and unfortunately for him, if there is a narrow-minded, bigoted uh, mullah who goes, in, who um, looks after that complaint, investigates that complaint, then he may have had it. There is a possibility of his suffering. Sometimes he is put behind the bar. Sometimes he is uh, told to quit immediately and so on. But, uh, does it happen that uh, the the people who let them go through to do pilgrimage, do they first ask you if you are uh, a normal... Uh, uh, normally they don't. This is what I'm telling you. In other countries mm. they don't. In Pakistan they do. In other countries they don't. Because if they ask an Ahmadi who he is, naturally he would tell them he is an Ahmadi. And there is no such performer he is which he has to fail. This is not the routine. But in Pakistan, Naturally, you have to fill the form, declaring your religion and everything. Are you thinking of going to Hajj? Uh, no. No? So, so, you know, in Punjabi we say, Jere pen ni jana uda ra ki puchna. The village to which you are not going, why are you asking about the way which leads to that village? Please sit down. Uh and wasting Mr. Rashid's time. <laughs> no, but you had, you have already come to an agreement, haven't you? Sir, he asked me before, you know, he came, sir. But he asked me twice and I agreed to it. You did? Yeah, I did. You gave up your right? Yeah, I'll ask more. You know. Okay. Hazur, if you allow me to read uh, something in Urdu. Uh, Please, you have been doing that before, uh, without asking problem. permission. Uh, this I say you have already been doing it. Yes. So why ask permission this time? Uh, <laughs> Hazur, uh, th this book has been written by Mr. Abdul Hamid Khan and published uh, by Feroz Sons uh, uh, Limited Lahore. Uh, in this book, under Thamatapa ki Tamir Awal, written, Jab Hazrat Adam alayhi salam or Hazrat Hawa, it's always story, Eve, Eve. Yeah.